Hey everyone, on this video we are going to cover how to use our digital asset Spine Vortex. This digital asset will help your Houdini's workflow. I've made this digital asset a few years ago when I was learning Houdini, following one of Ben Watt's tutorial and I've decided to update and share with you. This asset allows you to create vortex animation following a spline with any simulation you want, particles, fluids or even pyro simulations. So let's check how it works. Ok, let's start by drawing a curve using the front viewport. Let's draw a simple curve object. A little bigger. Ok. Something like that. Let's go back to perspective viewport just to see how our curve. Okay, here we have our node object, let's dive in, and you see we have our curve object. Let's change to maybe Bezier, uh, breakpoint, something like that, just to have more smooth uh, spline, and place a resample node, just to have more points. I'm going to change maximum to maximum segments. Let's have 100. That's cool. And don't forget, this is very important to turn on the curve EU attribute. Our um, our digital assets will need this. So after that, let's install our digital asset. Go to assets, install asset library. Let's pick up the Doxia Spine Vortex. Press accept and then install. If you press tab now and write Doxia, you have here the Doxia Spine Vortex. And as you see, we need a, a input, a spine input. Let's wire the resample to it. Let's wait until this process. And turn on Doxia. Now you see we have uh, a volume. If you press I here, you see we have a volume named Vel that has our velocities. Let's place a null and let, let's call it out val. Okay, no, uh, now go back to our uh, digital asset and let's see. We have a, a spline, uh, a volume with custom velocity. You could place a visualized node to see the, the velocities, but I open these and I had this uh, checkbox so you can see the points and if you turn on, let me turn off the points, if you turn on the normal on this icon, you'll see our uh, velocities, our normals of each point are the velocities we are going to use uh, on our volume and in our simulation, okay? So here the size tunnel controls the size of this tunnel. If you increase this, you have a much bigger tunnel. Okay. And with this ramp, you can control the size variation of the tunnel alongside the spine. If you see, if I go here and decrease this to 0 0.2, you'll see our tunnel will get uh, on 0 0.2. We are going to get uh, 20% of this uh, one, in this case 0 0.2. <laughs> so let's go back here and add it to 5 maybe. That's a nice tunnel. Maybe I'm going to increase this. Have a nice uh, start and then uh, slows down and decrease the size of the tunnel and then go back again. Okay. Uh, the third input is the vortex force. Let me turn off the noise for now, just to see, to show you how it's, it works. So if we turn off the vortex force to zero, you'll see these uh, velocities, the normals, are kind of like uh, following the spine. Okay, it's a follow the spine uh, simple force. And if you turn this up to one, you'll see we'll have 
of uh, orbit uh, going around the, the spine force. Okay, hope you can see that. For this kind of simulation, I like to have at the middle 0.5. So as you see, the normals and the velocity are off the way to the orbit and follow the spine. The off band attribute is for the volume. It I'm adding this here because it depends on your size of the project. If you increase this to two, you'll see our volume will increase. It takes more time to process. See, because we are converting the points to VDB, so this off band is controlling how much size we are going to to expand of each particle. So let's keep it to 0 0.5. Normally you don't need to use and change this attribute, but I had it just in case you need to change. Let's go back to our visualized vertex. And here you have a tab with the, the noise. Normally I have this to on when you add this the spine vertex attribute. It's adding a little noise to the to each point. So if you keep it to zero, turn off, you have no noise of each point. If you increase it, as you see, we have a, a little noise to the velocities. Okay, just a nice input to, to break the uniform uh, structure of the forces. So now for this to work, don't forget, always change this, uh, turn off the visualize vertex and go back to our VDB. So now if I press I, you see we have a volume named Val. So now how to use these on our simulations? Let's place, I'm going to place a geo. I'm going to place a grid object. Just one by one, a small grid. I'm going to turn off the normals. And I'm going to, let me just paste grid, right grid. And we are going to use a pyro uh, below with smoke just to show you how to use this curve object. Converting this grid to a below with smoke. And if I press play, you, you will have a normal pyro simulation. Let me go back here, let me just organize these. Mm -mm. It is doing the simulation. Going back to import. I don't like to use this one. Okay. And I'm going to place a light just to see the smoke a little better. So I'm going to press control and distant light. I'm going to place the light like this. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the curve object because we don't need to see the volume. So we have here a uh, normal below is smoke on the grid. We are going to change a few things. First, I'm going to increase the density of our smoke because I, I like to see it a little better. Just to five. And let's change some things on our auto dot network. First, Let's change on our pyro solver. I'm going to turn off the buoyancy because I want our volume, our pyro simulation to be controlled by our curve, our spine vertex, right? And our shape, uh, maybe it's cool. It's dissipation 7%. I'm going to decrease this 0 0.01 and uh, 0 0.1 on turbulence. This values depends on your uh, size of your simulation, but I'm working with a really small simulation, so I think this will work just fine. And now let's add our spine vortex uh, velocities. This is a volume, as I said, so let's place a volume source. It's a source smoke. Let's pick up our outvale. And we on operations, let's press plus and let's add a vector. As we already know, 
our source volume is named val and our target field will be val. Instead of add, we want to copy our uh, custom velocities and let's increase to 10, just increase the scale. So now let's wire this in on the merge. Okay, everything is fine. Okay, after that we need to increase or decrease the, this resolution, but for now let's see how this behaves. See, pretty simple. Our uh, pyro is going with uh, the spine vertex, we just need to increase, let's Turn off the clamp to maximum, increase the padding to 4, okay, I think this will work. Let's see. And as you see, now we have a simple pyro simulation following our curve object. You can turn down the dissipation, but just to show you how we can add our curve object, our simple spline, right? With a vertex animation and changing our simulations. Now to show you, I'm going to open the other project. So now we know how to work on uh, pyro simulations. I'm going to show you how we can work with uh, particles, okay? Just as before, let me turn off this, this, okay, just cleaning the, the project. So we have a curve object, so normally spine, as I show you, linked to the spine vertex. So it's, it's a bigger one here. So it's a simple curve with a resample, always the curve view attribute turn on, doxy spine vertex, and then our uh, null. And here, let me turn off again the curve object. And here I have a, a simple spine, a simple sphere, sorry. I'm transforming just to put it in one place. And I have a pop network, a pop net, okay? Inside this pop net, normally you have the pop source, right? I have a static object because I have a, an object. Let me display. I have this object. Our particles are going to collide with this object. And then, just to have the spline vortex controlling the velocity of our uh, pop net, I have a simple pop head vect by volumes. Let me zoom in. I have this pop effect volume to control our velocity of our particles. So again, just link the SOP, the null after the doxia spine vertex. The field name is VEL, the velocity scale you want. Normally I use 10, 5 or 10. And then I put update velocity and velocity blend 0.5. With this uh, node, pop effect by volumes, you can control your uh, particles simulation, right? I, uh, I have these in cache, just in case I can show you. Here I have my particles moving with the spine vertex. And for fluids, it's pretty simple. Let me go back to our spine vertex, particles, fluids. I have the exact same thing. I have the curve object. Let me turn off the lights. Okay. It's pretty simple. I have the curve object again, same as uh, I show you on the particles with the spine vertex. Okay. And the null, always the same. Okay. My computer was processing. Then I have the sphere object, just to, uh, uh, the sphere on the with transform to place the sphere, and I create a fluid. Okay, I did this with a simple uh, shelf tool. 
I went to particle fluids and I put uh, flip, flip fluid from object simple as that and inside our uh, autodop network we have the normal uh, system right here and you just had like on pyro simulation you had a volume source source smoke SOP you link the SOP path it's the outval the null and and it's the exact same thing as the pyro simulation you had a vector called val target field val you change to copy and then the scale is the thing you need for your simulation this number will depend on your size of your simulation and how much you want to to depend on or the strength increase the strength of the spine vertex in case of the pyro, the fluid simulation instead of linking to the merge i like to link to the third the third input of the flip solver as you see if you hover the mouse button here on this one you have volume, uh, volume velocity this is where you have volumes to control your uh, fluid simulation and that's pretty simple right as you have seen this digital asset will help your workflow without having to prepare the whole system if you want to get any of our digital assets, they are available on our Patreon page for one month and then move to Gumroad. If you want to get them for a small price, check out our Patreon page for more info. Hope you enjoyed this small video and the digital asset. Have a nice day.